A mega church wants to build right here in Del Cerro. What the community has to say coming up. We continue to hear about vacant fast food joints. I'm Abby Black working for you on what the new owners plan to do with this so-called eyesore in La Jolla. California will soon have a new minimum wage after a battle with fast food workers. How much and when it goes into effect. You can never have enough helping hands. Meet the volunteers who have gifted thousands of canes, scooters, and walkers to seniors in need. CBS 8 News Live at 6 starts right now. After a nearly seven hour meeting, a unanimous vote and plenty of objection, plans for a 900 seat church are moving forward in Del Cerro. Good evening, I'm Jesse Pagan. Marcella is off tonight. I'm Carlo Chiquetto. The San Diego Planning Commission has given the All People's Church Project the green light. That despite a lot of pushback today from dozens of people who live in the neighborhood. CBS 8's Kirsten Holmes has been following this story for us today. She's live near the future planned site. Kirsten. Yeah, that's right, Jesse. I am right here where they want to build this church, and I want you to take a look at the area right here beside me. You can see there's a lot of green space. There's a lot of brush and a lot of trees right next to a very busy College Avenue road that feeds into the Del Cerro neighborhood. It's the loss of this green space without the additional housing and the extra traffic that will come to the area that the people I talked to today say those are their reasons for opposing the idea. But others I talked to say they welcome the church. Most people are worried about the environmental impact and the increase in traffic. Jesse says she's also concerned about the church's impact on the community's growing student population. And they're also really close to the university, which means they might start proselytizing where they may not want to be, you know, seen. The San Diego Planning Commission voted to approve the plans for the All People's Church after a meeting that lasted several hours with dozens of public comment, both for and against the idea. The city of San Diego originally approved plans for 24 single family homes here, but the owners of the property sold to All People's Church. The congregation is now looking to build a 900 seat church with a parking garage, classrooms and a gym on the six acres of land off I-8 and College Avenue. Wayne lives in Del Cerro, and he says he sees both sides. It is encroaching on the, on the neighborhood, per se, but they also have a problem with the um, uh, construction going on right over here. Um, it's going to be six stories tall, where nowhere else that you look is, is six stories tall. Mavis and Daniel say this project won't work in this spot. Uh, first of all, that we need housing here um, in Del Cerro, in San Diego in general. We have a lot of traffic already. We don't need a shirt in that corner. They're building a building in a store. We're very upset. We have children in the school. The traffic is arranged right now at San Diego State. We don't need a church here. It doesn't matter what church is. It we don't need any more building in that corner. Already a lot of traffic here in the area. This is a, a small, although we're in San Diego City, very small area to have something of that size, regardless of the project, a little bit overwhelming. Mike has lived in Del Cerro for at least 15 years, and he says this is nimbyism at work or not in my backyard. I don't know. I take a more global perspective, aside from which it's only it's really only on Sunday and there are, are other alternatives. Uh, people in this neighborhood know how to get to the highway in various ways, so I'm fine with it. Okay, so the Planning Commission approved this idea with a few limitations like no future plans for a K-12 through school in this area, and they're limiting the hours and the days that the church will be open so that they can lessen the impact on the neighborhood. The next stop for this idea is the San Diego City Council. Reporting live for CBS 8, I'm Kirsten Holmes. Back to you. Kirsten, we heard people mentioning that traffic was a big concern against them. One of the reasons they're against that. It's, it's rush hour right now, so how does the traffic look like near where the church is proposed to go? How is it looking out right now? All right, so it took me 20 minutes just to drive nine miles, but I want you to get an idea of what traffic's looking like in this area. You see College Avenue is pretty clear, but you see down there we have heavier traffic for the rush hour hour, which is typically right there on the 8th at the College Avenue exit. And it will probably be even busier if they have midweek worship services. Carlo? Kirsten Holmes reporting live for us. Thanks, Kirsten.
Right now, San Diego Mayor Todd Gloria is pushing Governor Gavin Newsom to expand the state's conservatorship law. Under the current law, to qualify for conservatorship, you must be considered gravely disabled. State Bill 43 would broaden the definition to include people who suffer from mental illness or substance abuse or people who are at great risk of serious harm. We have to be able to provide a level of care to these very vulnerable individuals because when we don't, we know what happens. They cycle through our emergency rooms, they interact with our first responders, they go to jail. I think we can all agree, no matter where you stand on this issue, that jail is not an appropriate place for people suffering from mental health issues. The bill has passed the legislature and the governor has until October 14th to sign it. Most of California's fast food workers will soon earn a minimum wage of $20 an hour, among the highest in the nation. Governor Newsom signed this increase earlier today and it takes effect next April. Racial justice, social justice, economic justice, you know, making more gentle the life of this world. Uh, that's a beautiful thing. And so what a gift, what a gift that I get to pull this out. In exchange for a higher pay, labor unions are dropping their push to hold fast food corporations liable for the misdeeds of their independent franchise operators in California. The law also creates a fast food council that can increase the minimum wage each year through 2029. We've been working for you to do something about a decaying McDonald's in Ramona. The building has been sitting there empty since a fire years ago. We've made the county and the McDonald's Corporation aware of the problem. After our stories aired, we got another working for you request, this one about a Jack in the Box in La Jolla. So we sent CBS 8's Abby Black. She's live there with what she's dug up about this building. Abby? Jesse, we're across the street so we can give you a full picture of what this former Jack in the Box looks like here on Pearl and Cuvier streets. You can see that it is surrounded by a fence and the signage is missing. Now we know that this can happen when property sell or there's construction, but those who live here say really for two years we're working for you and I contacted the owner to find out what's going on. La Jolla is a global destination for tours, and for those living here, they take pride in their community. The public has come to us with general um, concerns about what La Jolla looks like and keeping La Jolla beautiful. When you drive down Pearl Street, you see the former Jack in the Box that looks abandoned. It's surrounded by fencing, and the signage has been removed. That building is one of the buildings that they are concerned with. We reached out to La Jolla Town Council President Trigger Strasburg after a CBS 8 viewer saw our Working For You story about concerns over an abandoned McDonald's in Ramona and said a similar story is happening in La Jolla Village. We went out to see the former fast food joint ourselves and learned the viewer wasn't alone. Vacant is one thing, but, but this has become an eyesore. I found Bishop's School, which sits behind the lot, bought the property in 2021 and were told the plan was to lease the building until the school converted it into a campus facility. I guess I was led to believe that the Bishop School was going to tear it down and build something in addition to their campus. So uh, I sort of trusted that that was going to happen soon. But it's been two years and it still looks abandoned. I reached out to Bishop's School. They sent me a lengthy statement. In part, it says we prioritize the safety, health and well-being of our school community and greater community, which includes security of our campus properties. We maintain the site regularly and immediately repair any damage adding that the building is still up for potential lease. There's a difference between a vacant building that is looking for a tenant and the building that exists there. It is an eyesore for sure. Since we started asking questions about the so-called eyesore, the La Jolla Town Council is now putting the issue on their agenda for the next board meeting and inviting Bishop's school to join the conversation. That building is not a really good representation of what we want La Jolla to look like. And so I'm encouraging people at Bishops to recognize that they're part of this community too and that therefore they would want their downtown to look nicer. To read the Bishop School entire statement, go to CBS8.com. And again, the La Jolla Town Council is inviting anyone who's concerned about this issue to attend their next meeting that will be held on October 12th at the La Jolla Rec Center starting at 5 o'clock. Jesse? Abby, what does the city say about all of this, and is there anything they can actually do about it? 
Well, I did. I, I looked it up on the code enforcement to see if there were any type of violations, and I did not find any. So I called the city, and they say that they do investigate any vacant properties that are not maintained. But again, there was no violation or, excuse me, no complaints that have been filed. So if you go to CBS8.com and read this story, I will direct you on how you can file a complaint. Working for you in La Jolla, Abby Black, CBS8. All right, you heard it from herself working for you, Abby Black. And in live in La Jolla tonight. Abby, thank you. Don't forget here at CBS 8, we are working for you. If there's something you'd like us to look into, email us at workingforyou at cbs8.com. The San Diego Public Library is part of a new campaign to make sure young readers can read banned books. The Books Unbanned campaign gives access to more than 250 books that are either banned or challenged in other parts of the United States in ebook or audiobook form. Some of the titles, All Boys Aren't Blue by George M. Johnson and Toni Morrison's The Bluest Eye. The program is supported entirely by donations. First responders are typically credited with saving lives, but most of the time they don't get to reconnect with the people they save. Today, the San Diego Fire Department reunited with Tim Gagen. Last June, Gagen suffered cardiac arrest while on a bike ride in Point Loma. A bystander called 911 and gave him CPR while waiting for the crew to arrive. Statistics show that people that have my cardiac arrest, very, very small percentage even live. And then to come back to being pretty well normal, pretty unique. Now Tim wants everyone to know the importance of learning CPR and that anyone could have a hand in saving a life. History was made in three different ways today for the San Diego Diocese. For the first time ever, the San Diego bishops were consecrated on the same day. The ceremonies for bishops Michael Pham and Felipe Pulido were held this morning at the St. Teresa of Carmel Catholic Church in Del Mar Heights. This is now also the first time the San Diego Diocese will have three auxiliary bishops at the same time, and the first time a bishop born in Vietnam will serve here in San Diego. Still ahead tonight on CBS 8 News Live at 6, a government shutdown is looming. What that means for military members and veterans here in San Diego. And we say goodbye to a beloved Harry Potter actor who brought happiness even in the darkest of times. Well, we're starting to see more cloud cover rolling in. We did have sunshine this afternoon, but we are gearing up for more clouds and a storm system and rain this weekend. Your complete forecast ahead. Plus, Hurricane Ian survivors look back at one year of recovery. Why officials say rebuilding is a slow effort. 